Welcome to a brand new video guys. Today we are talking about the pink ram's horn snail, really all ram's horn snails. So let's get started on that. By the way, if you like the new light on this aquarium, go check out the last video because it's awesome. All right, so the ramshorn snail, in my case, particularly the pink ramshorn snails, those are the only ones that I have experience with. The spotlight is gonna be general for all of them, but just so you know, those are the only ones I have experience with. So those are ones I'm gonna be speaking in regards to. So the ramshorn snail, uh, as far as I've kept them, I've kept them uh, all the way to their max size, max size being around one inch. So I think the same as a nearite snail. It's definitely not as small as some of your pond snails and your bladder snails and stuff like that, but they're also not so big. They're like mystery snails while they're, where they're eating your plants and they're knocking over decorations and stuff like that. Um, they're a great size when they're babies to feed to pea puffers as I would know. They're also a good size for feeding to bigger puffers when they're adults. So I would highly recommend them for that. Now with ramshorn snails, pink ramshorn snails, obviously they're bright pink, which looks so awesome, especially on a darker substrate. Also their shell, again, the ones I keep, have a very dark, nice brown, which is great because as the problem goes with most snails, they'll breed out of control and eventually just layer your substrate, layer your decorations, layer your plants. So if you wanna get away with that, you gotta have snails that kind of complement the decoration. And I believe that these snails do that very well on uh, driftwood. Now, social behavior is normally gonna be a part of this species spotlight series, but in this case, there's not a lot of social behavior. <laughs> Among themselves, they are asexual, I believe, is the right word for that which means they carry both organs, either of them can carry eggs, and either of them can fertilize eggs, which means you're gonna have a lot of eggs. You could have eggs from just one because eggs may already be fertilized, and sometimes they can fertilize their own eggs. But other than forming giant breeding balls with each other, there's not a lot of social interaction that's gonna be going on. In terms of interaction with other species, the smaller snails are particularly vulnerable to being eaten by larger fish. Um, again, puffer fish, very large fish will eat the bigger ones as well. But in terms of going the other way with it, ramshorn snails don't really notice, except for when they're dead, in which case they're gonna clean them up pretty much overnight. In terms of activity level, this species is very low on activity level, obviously being a snail. However, they are always moving. You will almost never see them resting. They constantly are looking for new things to eat, which is great when you're trying to get rid of algae or even recycle fish waste, which is another great part of having snails. On that note, I can recommend this species for pretty much any tank setup, preferably a tropical setup with driftwood where they can blend nicely, and a lack of predators, which is pretty much limited to very large fish and specialized species such as pufferfish or assassin snails, which are kind of built to eat this animal. My personal experience with this species is it is very easy to keep. If you want them to breed, all you have to do is put in food. They are great for cleaning up leftovers, algae, dead animals, but they are not invincible. Aside from predators, there is one very prevalent problem that people have when keeping ramshorn snails or any snails, and that is a lack of calcium in the water. If you have little or no calcium in your water, this species is not gonna live very long. And I have found their average lifespan to be about six months. What a lack of calcium will do in shortening that lifespan is it'll prevent them from being able to continue building their shell. Without calcium to continually build onto their shell, eventually their internals will be exposed to their environment and they will die. But there is still hope if you have low calcium in your water. You can add it using store-bought bottles or you can put eggshell or old snail shells in the water and it will naturally dissolve or the snails will rasp off of it directly and build it onto their shells. All in all, I think this species, especially my color variant, is great, especially for a planted tank and I would highly recommend it, especially if you plan on selling them 
and they go for a high price in your area. As always, if you guys have additional questions, leave it in the comments, like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you next Sunday.